Okay, this is something that we covered pretty well in the uh, first DVD, but we felt that we should cover it again. Uh, it's very important, like I said earlier on, 87% of your show points come from your paintwork. And this is the car that we're going to be doing in the DVD. Uh, last time we did three Nova bodies. This time it's a 1964 T-Bolt. I shot this with a aluminum base followed up by multiple light coats of testers, burgundy, enamel, metallic, and then uh, multiple coats of testers clear. Now we've got a great shine. You can shave in it right now. However, we've got one little mark, and that's right here, and that's got to go. Now the easiest and best way to do this. Now this is Detail Master's polishing kit. You get 3,200, 3,600, 4,000, 6,000, 8,000, and 12,000. It's a wet dry, it's rubber back paper. Now you can also get this in the LMG micro mesh polishing kit, and it's basically the same thing. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to start with this, we're going to polish out. I normally do this at the sink, but in order for me not to drive Jamie crazy and dragging him all over the place, we decided to shoot this here. You can do this sitting at your workbench. You need this polishing kit. You need a bowl of cold water, clean bowl of cold water. Then we're going to take the Novice 2. We're going to take some soft, clean white t-shirt. And then we're going to finish it off with the model wax, the treatment from Final Detail. Okay, first things first. We want to pull this out. Being that this is almost right on the top of the surface and Murphy once again as always and as usual he visited. So what we want to shoot for, we've got the 12,000, we've got the 8,000, we've got 6,000, and we've got the 4,000. Now I'm going to set the 32 and the 3600 aside because I don't really need that because it's very close to the surface. And what I want to do, I want to take this, I want to take the bowl of water, and I want to dip it and just very lightly go right and naturally it's right on a high spot so you have to be very careful because you can burn through this in half a heartbeat. When anytime that you're wet sanding you always want to just go lightly. Okay this is great for taking out little specks of dirt and a little imperfection sometimes you'll get when you're shooting with the airbrush. Alright so I want to make sure that I got it okay it's almost all gone it's hooked right in here we got a little bit more to go here a little bit more sanding it's just a tiny little spot now there's another little spot on here that you can't see but I can be in the anal retentive maroon that I am okay that spot is gone okay now what I want to do is I want to step right over here there's a little tiny and it was probably in the last coat of the clear that it fell onto so we're going to take that out too. Now like I said, I normally like to have cold running water. I usually do this, but I saved this for the DVD specifically. Okay, there you go. Those two spots are gone. Now I'm going to move up to the 6,000, dip it in, and I'm going to sand those two spots. And you don't have to rub real hard. You might have to step this down sometimes, especially if a piece is in there deep. You might have to go down to the 32, the 3600. The LMG polishing kit goes from 1800 all the way to 12,000. It's a little bit more money. But either or, both are well worth the cost. And like I said, surround yourself by good tools and products. Okay, now as you can see, that real heavy look is starting to disappear. Now we're going to walk up to the 8,000. Get a little motion going here. And you want to try and sand the whole thing so everything is uniform. Make sure, you sand, always check your sandpaper. Being that this is a brand new kit, 
I'm very lucky that I don't have to worry about it, but you always make sure that you don't have any grit, dirt. You protect this sandpaper like it's your baby sister. Keep it in a uh, Ziploc bag when it's not in use. That way dirt and dust can't get on it. Make sure you rinse it off real good with cold water before you put it on. Okay, there you go. Now, the 8000 is done. Now see, we got a little bit of a milky going, but if you notice, the shine's starting to come back in. And there we go, okay? You can see the light. Now, I've just got a little bit of milkiness left. Okay, what I'm going to do, now we're going to go with the 12,000. And we're going to go over the whole thing. And like I said, just rubbing gently on it. And this way it's all uniform. Okay, there you have it. Now I'm going to dip this in a little bit, wipe this off, take one of these little chunks here and dry it. Now, it, you still got a little bit of a haze, but I promise you, the little tiny scratch marks that you see in there, in that haze, you see them? They're going to disappear here in about two seconds. Shake up the novice too real well. And you don't have to use a lot and you certainly don't have to press really hard. Just take a tiny bit and you start and you work in a small area. And you just lightly circular motion. Just rub it in. Rub it out. Now the gloss and the and that glass like finish is starting to come through. And like I said, you really, really don't have to rub really hard with this because it cuts a little bit. It's just got a, like a slight cut to it. Now they do make a novice three which is pretty harsh. I mean, you have really had to have used some heavy duty sandpaper on it. Um, you shouldn't have to get that deep and have to end up using that. Um, if you lay your coats on thin, like I indicated in the uh, first DVD, now there you go. You should be okay. Now, all the scratch marks are gone. The two in slight imperfections are gone. Now, to protect it, make sure it stays safe and I always do this when I'm on an initial build I always use the treatment wax novice one which is part of the one two three which makes sense novice one is more of a silicone I use that at the shows because all that does it deters the electrostatic charge from rubbing on it you don't get as much dust and dirt on your paint job sitting at the tables from everybody walking by and this I use for this is like the protector and you got to use a little bit you only use a you know a little bit at a time rub it in and what little if any of the scratch marks that were left will disappear using this Now I usually go over the entire body of the car with this, especially after bare metal foiling. And I'll use the Novice 2 very lightly and then I'll use the treatment wax over top of it. This gives me the good base. I don't really have to worry about anything. It will, uh, it will shine and protect this paint like nobody's business. Okay, a little bit more here and this will be all finished up. Some light polishing, a little bit of rubbing, and then like I said, from now on, I mean, you can still use this, but it's probably easier and simpler to use the novice one. Okay, there you have it. Now, it's like glass, and I got a little bit of fingerprint action going on up here, so I'll do a little rubbing up here with it.
Okay, there you have it. It's like you could shave in it. All uniform, all smooth, piece of glass. Burgundy piece of glass, I should say. Speaking of glass, okay, we're going to set this body aside. Now, everyone knows glass doesn't always arrive from the factory in the finest condition. Sometimes you'll have little tiny minute scratches. You'll have tiny minute little smudges. It just comes from the box being moved and shipping. Being in the plastic, the plastic has a little bit of a texture to it. It might rub. It might sting in a little bit and leave a little bit of a mark. Now what I do, and this helps make it pop, depending. If you, this is pretty clean. There's very little of anything on this particular piece. So what I'm going to do, this is twofold reason. You rub a little bit of the treatment wax on it, it cleans it, shines it, cause it to really pop when it's sitting on a table. You get a real nice high reflection off of it. And also it will remove the minute little tiny marks and scratches and that little bit of fogging. Nice catch there, buddy boy. And you want to do both sides. Flip it over. And there you have it. Now, here's another thing. You can use this polishing kit, the 3200, 3600, 4000, 6000, 8000, 12000. Now, there are times where you'll have deep scratches, especially if you buy a vintage kit, kit that's been old, opened up, left around, banged around. They did not really do a lot with protecting the glass back in the day. So now what you have to do is you're going to have to take the polishing kit. You're going to have to do exactly with the glass what I did with the paint job. And you'll end up with the same slightly milky finish. Then you use the novice too. And then you use the treatment wax. And a lot of times you can bring the glass back to life. Now also if you happen to get glue on it, and that's another thing that we're going to cover a little bit later on in the DVD, getting glue on it, like hot glue or something else like that, let it dry. Don't touch it. Don't smear it. Because actually what you can do is you can take this polishing kit, sand off that glass, and not have to worry about anything because it will polish out. Might not be perfect. But I'll tell you what, it'll be, you'll be hard pressed as a judge or an observer of your model sitting on the contest table to really tell what happened to that glass. So you take all your pieces of glass, examine them. If they look good, just a little treatment wax because this will prevent any fogging from hot glue or anything else like that, which is another thing we're going to get to a little bit later on. One thing that a lot of people do, I don't condone it. I always work with my bare hands. Some people want to work with cloth gloves. The drawback on that is when you do this, you get the hot glue or any type of solvent on your fingers, you can't feel that it's there if you've got the gloves on. So what happens, you reach over, you pick up your body, you've got those gloves on, guess what? You just put hot glue or whatever solvent that you were working with on your body. Can it be sanded off? Yes. But why put yourself through the misery? This way, if I'm using glue and I get it on my fingers, I feel it and I have several pairs, more pairs than I can count, of modeling jeans. Hey, you give it the old rub on the leg, check the fingers, make sure there's no stickiness to the surface, but ah, you're done. 